What is the first thing you think of when you hear Ethiopia? Is it poverty, political turmoil, or ethnic violence? Images of starving children are hard to forget, but there's another side to Ethiopia's story. While Ethiopians are some of Africa's poorest people, the fact is their economy is booming and is the second fastest growing economy on the continent. It was the third fastest growing country in the world between 2000 and 2016, with an average economic growth rate of 10% in just the last decade. So what's happening? How can a country with so much growth have so much poverty? First, we need to understand what's fueling the economy. Dr. Carlos Oya at SOAS explains. A key factor you know, driving this, this growth has been uh, public investment and in state intervention. Construction and infrastructure are key elements to the country's economy. Large-scale infrastructure projects like the Grand Renaissance Dam will produce around 15,000 gigawatts of power per year. This will double Ethiopia's total energy capacity, and it'll also be the largest dam in Africa. Then there's Sub-Saharan Africa's first metro, which was a joint venture between Ethiopia and China, and the massive Chinese-funded railway network that will connect East Africa. Ethiopia is, is, is not a commodity-dependent economy. It's not rich in natural resources. So that is also reflected in the dynamics of foreign direct investment. So foreign direct investors have been investing in different sectors in Ethiopia, but particularly uh, remarkable is how much investment has been going to the manufacturing sector. People call it the new China, with its manufacturing centers and fast economic growth strategy. Ethiopia's huge population gives it access to cheap labor, something that kickstarted China's manufacturing sector and its economic boom. Fashion brands like H&M, Guess, and J.Crew have already set up manufacturing centers. While the country's biggest investor is China, others are taking notice, with money coming in from Saudi Arabia, the U.S., India, and Turkey. The Ethiopian government is planning to open its state-run telecoms and Ethiopian airlines to domestic and foreign investment. With all of this money pouring in, why are people still trapped in poverty? Well, it takes time for economic growth to lead to development. The problem is that you know, economic and social development usually takes you know, a long time. It takes decades, generations. On other aspects of, of what we call development, let's say, for example, um, basic social indicators, Ethiopia has uh, made substantial progress, uh, whether it's uh, about health outcomes or, or education outcomes, again, starting from a very low base, and that is also a development. Ethiopia is still struggling with droughts and famine and is dependent on foreign aid. Let's not forget uh, the Ethiopian economy is a foreign exchange constrained economy. So foreign aid and, uh, and foreign direct investment are important uh, injections for an exchange. But the Ethiopian government is able to manage uh, these flows in a way that does not um, compromise its sovereignty. Ethiopia, Africa's oldest independent country, was only under Italian colonial rule for five years between 1936 and 1941. Then there was a period of socialist military government in the 1970s and 80s. But overall, it's relatively politically stable, and the economy has made remarkable progress since 2000. It's following liberal politics, but is criticized for not being inclusive to different ethnic groups. With a per capita income of $783, there's a lot of work that needs to happen to pull its people out of poverty. But Dr. Oya is hopeful. Frankly, I don't see you know, any other country in Africa that is following the dynamics and trends that Ethiopia is following.